And now we're getting hints, actually, of what Vonica can do. Uh, the, the question exactly of what her magic is uh, continues. It, it, it's definitely a uh, very brought up topic amongst the fans because we already have somewhat knowledge of, um, of Xenons and Dantes, but now it seems like uh, maybe they are all going to have two different magics. So who knows if uh, Xenon has anything else. Maybe it's just something Dante has. But we have... At least, uh, we got some breadcrumbs leading towards, uh, Vonica's type of magic. I think this chapter really kind of, like, laid it out pretty well. Uh, first off, I, I did like the color, uh, the color page at the start, and you have, uh, pretty much just little red riding hood Charmy. It's just a fun little picture. But, after that point, uh, gotcha, just taking out the Dark Disciple. I figured that the, the fourth one was just gonna get, like, off-panel, just because if it, the first one... Like, uh, was Sven King, like him, hey, he had, like, a good two-chapter fight, so it, it made sense for him to get his fight to get a little, uh, you know, extended out against Luck, and then against, uh, Leopold, we got a full chapter, which is still pretty good, I like that, but with, uh, with Charmy, the fact that it was so quick and so easy, I was like, if anybody's next on, uh, this last guy, he's gonna just completely trash him, and that being Gaja, so, I, I just see things, uh, for that Dark Disciple only going poorly even after the events of this chapter. But, uh, like, you just have God just like, oh, well, I had to leave the area because I had to take care of this Dark Disciple, but I need to get back to, uh, you need to get back to, uh, Laurel as fast as I can. I wish they would decide exactly on translating for a name. Like, I guess the official one, Lolo, will just call her. Instead of the, uh, always hard to pronounce, like, like, just her full name. Or I guess just her first name. We don't even know her full name. But, uh, just one of the Dark Disciples shows up, this dude with tongue magic. I actually have enjoyed, uh, some of the Dark Disciples in just the, the way that their, uh, demon buff is presented. Like, I really liked the, uh, the sniper dude. I thought his was really cool, just the way that kind of covered his eyes and went down to his hands. And then this dude, the fact that it, you know, it's around his mouth. I, I don't know, I, I, I like that little extra bit when it comes to relating to their magic. But... After the point, here comes in Vonica, who's just, like, disrupting all of the, uh, the magic in the area and messing with, uh, low loads, like, big surveillance and just, uh, large-scale AoE abilities. So, here she comes, and we know she's powerful. We already know this beforehand. We already have two characters we can kind of, like, compare to in terms of strength. That being, you know, obviously Dante and Xenon. But... Um, when she's talking to him, there's, there's a little bit of interesting, uh, interest, interesting, like, little breadcrumbs, like I said, about, uh, about, like, what her magic is. Because I assumed it was Megicula that cursed, uh, Lolo, but I guess it was Vonica. I, I know, I know that there was, like, a, a little bit of hinting towards it, uh, previously, a couple chapters ago. But if it was just straight, uh, just straight Vonica, like, n none of the abilities of, uh, of Megicula involved at all... That's, that, to me, I think is very interesting, a little bit telling of what exactly her power is. Because if it wasn't uh, Megicula, I figured it'd be like, you know, uh, you know using Megicula's power, but it seems just to be her base ability. And after that, like, uh, you see her just kind of, like, bring up all of her Dark Disciples. Like, she, she essentially explains that she sent her Dark Disciples out to kind of just, like, wreak havoc and, you know, attack the innocent and stuff. Uh, just to kind of, like, motivate them more to, like, fight harder in this. She's... She's definitely the sadistic one out of the three Dark Disciples. She's definitely not a... Uh, she comes off as definitely the most malicious. and Because, like, Xenon... Xenon just goes right to the... He's either kind of, like, chill or he goes right to the defeat. He goes right to the end. Dante has this kind of, like, weird playful aspect to him. Vonica just is, like, in this weird, like, head game kind of style that she's, like, all setting up. But the fact that she brings up uh she you know she pretty much just raises up the dark disciple like even says like you know it felt good getting uh you know whatever she did to him and all the other ones that are all around her and she's or not even all around her just all around uh the heart kingdom like all the ones that we saw defeated are back up they're healed and they're you know they're going another round with their uh with their opponents so we're gonna get to see an extended fight for each of these guys the one against gaja i'm just like do, do you really think you're going to do anything? Like, he completely mauled you with no effort. I mean, at least he's going to try. At least he's going to put some, uh, put another little, uh, another run at it. But my guess, and I, I, I do want to go in this a little bit in this video, because it's, it's probably the most, uh, intriguing thing about this chapter. 
because when you think about this chapter, um, I mean, really, all it is is like, oh, it starts out, oh, the God should be the Dark Disciple. Oh, here comes the Dark Disciple in, gets attacked by, um, gets attacked by Mimosa, who's given a little buff from, uh, from, uh, from Lolo, and then Vanica shows up. She revives her uh, Dark Disciples up, and then they begin an attack. It's it's really a setup chapter than anything. Like, and, and there was a little bit of action, but I mean, really, it, it was like a setup and tease at what her abilities are. And so I think just talking about her abilities are like the most fruitful thing you can get out of this chapter. So just basing it off of what I would guess, I could see her being some form of like buff and debuff kind of style character like like if these curses if she can uh, do them either in uh positive and negative effects like it just in in the idea of uh app uh i'm also i'm trying to say the the word that i'm just messing up uh application of uh of like her abilities like if she's got like this curse like oh um i'm just actually think an easy way to kind of just look at it something like uh irene you know peeking over at fairy tales just like when she drops like her berserker buff on somebody, it's like okay, yeah, you're you you're gonna get stronger, but you're gonna lose like your pretty much your sanity while doing it. You're gonna become just some mindless a like attacker. I can see that essentially with um with Vanica, just because it it has to have a theme. Clearly, like we already know that in uh, Black Clover, like their magics all have to fit like a certain style. Uh, they don't just have magic, you know, spread out. If, I mean, magic tools, if they use magic tools, they seem to, you know, be able to, um, you know, uh, add an extra uh, ability onto theirs, like, even if it's outside of their style, just anything that could be uh, useful. So I could see it something like that where she can just drop, like, different types of, like, uh, hexes or curses or just any form of, like, ailments. If she's got, like, this cool, I'm thinking maybe, like, if she can just, like, straight res them afterwards, it's like, yeah... I can put this on you, and you'll be linked to me forever, but I can kill you at any point, but otherwise you won't ever die. You know, something like that, where she's just got some really useful combat kind of, like, style, like, uh, combat, like, enhancing style abilities. I think it would actually make her, like, a really good foil to Laurel, because Laurel seems like she's, like, you know, she's clearly capable, like, but she's not, like, a weakling. But her magic so far, at least from what we've seen, is very centered around, like, uh, utility and support. She doesn't seem like she's much of, like, a straight offensive style fighter. I mean, she's got, like, the, the water knights, but that seems about the same as, like, uh, Mimosa with her flower cannon. Because it's like, yeah, you can use it for offense, but for the most part, it's like, uh, you're going to be using it to kind of, like, keep a gap between you and your opponent as you, you know, you go back to do your, your main thing. So... That, I think, is really interesting, and, you know, if she's intentionally built to be kind of like an opposite end of, uh, of Lolo, and if she ends up doing it, I, I, I do like the, uh, the idea of it if she's um, going to be using her Dark Disciples more, because eventually we know that each of the main cast are going to end up fighting Dark Disciples, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or in a group. Uh, you know, it's going to be a while until we actually see, you know, uh, Dante versus Asta, um, Zidon versus Yuno, and... Uh, Vanica versus Noel. When we get the actual versions of these fights, like the main ones at the end of the Spade War, sure, yeah, well, I, I can get that. So I'm wondering, like, how exactly it'll play out, and if she can make her Dark Disciples useful, that'll be pretty cool. And it would be understandable if, like, why her Dark Disciples would be like returning characters if she can continuously just bring them back up, buff them, and then use them that way. Kind of like, uh, it, it'd be like in the idea of. She's like the queen, and uh, not even not like bugs like chess. She's you know she's very powerful, but she's uh, you know she's more about that's like laying her uh, laying her minions all around in order for um, in order for them to kind of like you know be useful to her. I think that'd be really cool. I think that'd be really neat because so far like Dante we haven't seen any of his dark disciples. Uh, Xenons are completely like uh, you know fodder throwaway guys already dead with. Um, with, uh, Vonica, I think that'd be really cool for her to kind of, like, have a lot of focus around having Dark Disciples, as well as the fact it'd be cool if, like, maybe the reason that Xenon even is like, uh, oh, yeah, I'm gonna have my own Dark Disciples, just because he saw, like, oh, yeah, this is how, uh, this is how she fights, and she's like, well, you guys should also get your own, like, you know, uh, minions and stuff, whereas, like, other ones would be, like, Xenon and Dante, if they had, you know, when they're bringing out more of theirs, it'd be like, oh, yeah, we just have minions and stuff, you know, they're just there to kind of do stuff, so we don't have to do as much. 
But if it's with Vanica, it would, you know, it's obviously more originated towards uh, how her ability you know, just works in general. So I, I think that'll be really fun to see uh, uh, once it's revealed. Will it be something like that, or it could be something completely different? Maybe she's got like uh, I I know I've I mentioned before. Maybe she's got blood magic because I I think it'd be really cool to kind of like line up each of the uh, each of the Z uh, Zagratis siblings. You know, obviously having similar magic. You know, if you have bone, flesh, and blood, those are all going to be like within the same same ballpark. And uh, on top of that, I don't know. I think it would just be really cool to eventually kind of like stage up uh, uh, Vanica versus uh, Witch Queen fight. That would be really cool, because even though we saw the Witch Queen fight before, I mean, that wasn't even, like, her full capability, because she kind of, like, lost to her own ambitions and not, like, power levels or, like, a straight, like, defeat in combat. But anyway, other than that, uh, comment below. Tell me your thoughts about this chapter. It was an interesting yet fast-read chapter, which I do really like. I think it was only, like, like, it actually was a pretty well length. Was it, like, 17 pages? I don't know. I think it was just, it... it moved really fast like it were a lot of very fast motions in this but it, like i said it, it was a chapter that you're gonna end up reading a couple of times just because you're trying to figure out all the stuff like what is vanica's abilities like how does she get the dark disciples up you know how long are these are these fights going to continue well i guess except for the one with uh with the the dude with the nail magic i mean really god's just, just gonna drop another lightning bolt on him and take him out i mean it's probably gonna just be like haha you you know i can't defeat you but you can't kill me so he'll just be like grab him and carry him back and just lightning bolt him along the entire way just make it so it's like listen you're not gonna want to get up i i know you were trying for you know for this vanic lady but hey you can't do anything it's just agonizing for you eventually he's gonna just like fry his brain out so he can't even think but uh other than that like I said, comment below, thumbs up the video, for the like button, subscribe button, and check out my other videos. Brother than that, I appreciate everyone who's already subscribed, and I thank you all for listening. Bye.